it's a lucky i'm gonna have to make this a part two but uh as i was saying all right as you go um uh, darker in the in the color range it looks almost black all right but it's actually brown all right so blackish color of the face what's the blackish the most blackish color i've seen is almost black man you know so going back i am black but comely all right so he's dark dark skinned but he's comely i am black but comely that word comely is another word of beautiful all right comely beautiful you see i am black but comely O ye daughters of jerusalem as the tents of kadar now what did we see whenever we went to kadar why were they named kadar because it's a dark-skinned race of people dark proper masculine sons of ishmael proper now with reference to people all right dark skin you see descendants of kadar it says from dusky of the skin of the tent kadar a son of ishmael also collectively but his son was called dark man it's not talking about the literal tents of kadar all right it's not talking about the literal tents of kadar it could it could be but also the people of kadar are dark skinned people look at that black skin black skin man all right ishmael of an arabian tribe sprung from him you see so when you go to the root word you'll see that it's used before by oh it wasn't this one it's lucky all right so kadar is dark skinned people shahar when you go to the root word shahar which the other one was supposedly shahor which is not you go to job 30 and 30 it says my skin is black upon me which means what his skin is dark he's dark skinned and my bones are burned with heat my harp also is turned to mourning and my organ into the voice of them that weep all right my skin is black upon me you know um i have derision whose father's i just doing said it not. this is uh job talking about um edomites right here you know but down here it's talking about his own skin his skin is black upon him all right job's skin is black he was a dark-skinned man you see he was probably of um either judah benjamin or levi you know there's things that indicate but never are sure but through the spirit i believe that he was of the tribe of judah benjamin or levi you know he was a dark-skinned man now it doesn't mean that only dark people can be of the southern kingdom all right you have some dark-skinned brothers that are actually of the northern kingdom either gad or uh i've seen some really really dark-skinned issachars or issacharites um asher you have some asher that look almost completely dark skin you know like the brazilians yeah the brazilians and the argentinians argentinians which are some of the best soccer players that this world has known all right and you have the argentinians which are a little bit lighter and then you have the brazilians that are a lot darker and they hate each other <laughs> You know, which that that just goes to show how Israel is, man. If you're not dark skinned, we're gonna hate you. Well, if you're dark skinned, we hate you. And that's just that that's just how it is, man. You know, even upon the northern kingdom, you still have that separation, whether light skin or dark skin. You know. But Job was a dark skinned man. My skin, which means the flesh that he has. All right, my skin. I war skin hide skin all right so his skin is black shahar which is what we read to be black of skin you see that who else has black skin man all right besides the um the hamites all right which are the africans which are not the same thing as you so-called negroes man you are not the same thing you know and lord will not get into that in a minute all right but just going through um through all this stuff so those people that are living in in israel right now they aren't the real jews man 
Check this out. Zechariah 9 and 6. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. All right, now that word Philistines, I also wanted to get into this. All right, because the Philistines were dark-skinned people. All right, but the pride of the Philistines, when you look up that word Philistines, it means immigrants. All right, inhabitants of Philist uh, Philistia, descendants of Mizraim, which are the uh, Egyptians who were dark-skinned people. All right, of Canaan, you know, because they're Hamites. But a uh, bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. So let's go over here. Um, what was it? Uh, Ashdod people. Let's check this out. What comes up? These so-called Jews, man. Look at this. That's a bastard, bastard, man, you know? And what's a bastard according to the scriptures? Let's look at it, and we'll come back to Zechariah 9. It's uh, Hebrews 12 and 7. If ye endure chastening, the Most High deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, all right, all are partakers of, of not having that chastisement, man. All right. Without chastisement, we're all our partakers. Then are ye bastards and not sons. All are partakers. That word for all is everybody. Partakers means sharing in, partaking, a partner in work, office, dignity. All right. So everybody's part of that shame, man. Except the ones that come back to the fold, you know. So a bastard shall dwell in, in, in uh, Ashdod. Do you also have true Israelites? All right. True Israelites that are living in Ashdod. You have true Israelites that are living over there in, in, in uh, modern day Israel. All right. So they be considered bastards too. We were considered bastards. How are we considered sons? By the chastisement, by coming back into this truth, coming back into our nationality. You see? So a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and he does. He lives. He, there is a bastard in Ashdod, man. So Zechariah 9 and 6. A bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, um, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. All right. Now, that word Philistines, again, it can also be immigrants. All right. So we'll look up the word. So like, yeah. Let's look up the word immigrant. Uh, bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, Philistines, immigrant. Let's look up immigrants, and it says a person who comes to live permanently in a foreign country. All right. So those people that are over there living in in Israel right now, these people right here, all right, those are immigrants, man. Let's look up what uh, uh what was his name? Gamal. Abdel Nasser quote about Israel quote about fake Jews currently in Israel you will never be able to live here in peace all right and what's one of the promises to live in peace you see that because you left here black and came back white because you left here black and you came back white. All right. That's just spitting straight facts, man. You know, those guys that are living in Israel right now, they're not the real Jews. What is that? Revelations four. Uh, uh, I believe it was Revelations four. Oh, it was three and nine. Revelations 3 and 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Why is that? Why is that, man? We'll go to, um, what was it? Mm, I put a difference between Exodus. Uh, 11 and 7. 
Khan. It says, uh, Exodus 11 and 7, But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast. All right? Anything that belongs to Israel, a dog will not move his tongue. That ye may know that how that I, the, I Yahweh, doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Now, why did the Most High said that he puts a difference between the Egyptians and Israel? Well, let's look it up. Ancient Egypt. Ancient Egyptians. All right. Look at these. These are dark skinned people, man. You know? These are actually dark skinned people. <clears throat> Let's look up uh, real. Oop. I meant to put real. I don't know what Ray means. Real ancient Egyptian. Look at that, man. Come on. All right. Come on. These are what the real Egyptians used to look like. You know? You look at a so-called Negro. Matter of fact, let me get. Let's put African American. Uh, long hair. <clears throat> Come on, man, what the fuck? African-American with long hair. Let's put male. Look at this, man. What's that guy's name? Omari Omario or something like that? Mario. All right. These are Israelites. All right. Some of these are Hamites. You see? But to the untrained eye, some people are going to be like, okay, those are, those are all Israelites. You know? But there is a difference, man. What is that difference? The difference is the spirit that the Most High has put. Because in this time, in the time of Exodus, you had Egypt, uh, Egypt, Egyptian land that was catching hell by the Most High. You know? They were catching hell. And you couldn't tell an, an Israelite apart from an Egyptian. All right? Besides the things that they worshipped. You know? And you also had some Jakes that worship bad shit. All right? But while the Most High made it seem... Is when all this shit was going down and these, you know, animals were turning against the Egyptians and all this hell was being caught by the Egyptians. If you had an Egyptian right next to an Israelite and you put a dog, the dog would go straight up to the Egyptian, which seemingly looked just like the Israelite. But the spirit was different, man. That's why after the Exodus, you had an Israelite woman that had an uh, Egyptian husband and the child came out to be a Hamite. All right, an Egyptian, and uh, he went and he cursed the the name of the Most High. You know, he was coming up against the Israelites, that little Egyptian kid. You know, and the woman was trying to defend him. Why? Because that was her son. All right, but still, there's a different spirit that the Most High has put in between an Egyptian. All right, between an Egyptian ancient egyptian and the israelite there's a difference man there is a difference between an egyptian and an israelite the hamite there's a difference between the hamites and the israelites they're both dark-skinned people why else would the most high say that you know you know what let's type in uh why did joseph hide in egypt Look at that. How the fuck, how the hell is Joseph, all right, which here they portray him to be a white man. How How is he going to hide in Egypt, man? That makes no fucking sense. How is a white man going to hide in ancient Egypt full of dark skinned people? Makes no fucking sense, man. You know? It says uh, the flight into Egypt is a story recounted in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew 2 and 13 to 23 and in the New Testament Apocrypha soon after the visit of Magi the angel appeared unto Joseph in a dream telling him to flee to Egypt with Mary and the infant Yahweh Shai since King Herod would seek him to, would seek the child to kill him why how the how are they gonna hide in Egypt all right pretty close to Israel all right how are they gonna hide in Egypt if they were 
white. How are they going to hide in a country full of dark-skinned people? You see? The scriptures make sense, man. And that right there, that little testimony that these people want to give, it makes no fucking sense. And why is that? Because here in Exodus 11 and 6, And there shall be a cry in the land of Egypt. Why? Because they were catching hell, such as there was not like it, nor shall be like it anymore. But against the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Against a man or beast, that ye may know that, that Yahweh doth put a difference. He does put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. The Egyptians were dark-skinned people. The Israelites are dark-skinned people too. Or they were. You know, you, you have dark skin and light skin and almost pale skin people. You know, you have a variety now. <clears throat> but at that time, how else would Yahweh Shai hide with the Egyptians if they were all dark skin? Because Yahweh Shai was dark skin, Mary was dark skin, and Joseph was dark skin, man. The sons of Ishmael are dark skin. You know, the songs of songs, the songs of Solomon, he's dark skin. I am black but comely, all right? I'm dark skin, but I'm comely, I'm beautiful. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, which are dark skinned people, all right? And that word tents is talking about house, all right? As the tents, aha, tent, nomads' tent, the symbolic of wilderness life, a dwelling place, all right? A home, habitation, you see? The sacred tent of Yahweh, which is the tabernacle, the house of the Most High. You see? So the tents of Kedar are the houses, all right? The house of Kedar, which is what? The tribes, all right? The people, as the curtains of Solomon, you know? You have some curtains that, that are dark, clothes that is dark, you know? But that tent of Kedar is talking about the dark-skinned people because the people of Kedar are dark-skinned. Verse 6, look not upon me because I am black. Because the sun hath looked upon me. If the sun looks at something, let's look this up. Let's look this up, man. Uh, the sun looked. Let's look at images. You're going to see the difference, man. All right. See, everything that is showing right now is dark skinned people. Let's look up the sun versus white people. That's you right there, man. You Edomites. The sun hath looked upon me. You Is that dark skin? That ain't no dark skin. Come on, man. The sun has looked upon me. Oh, yeah, that made me black and beautiful. Hell no, man. <laughs> you know, get your ass out of here. Let's put African-American or... Uh, let's even put Mexican. Look at that. You're dark skin. See that? You're dark skin. You have some jakes that are uh, even lighter. You know? Sun versus I hate using this word. Look at that. Perfectly fine. All right. Chilling in the sun. Just chilling. The only people that, <laughs> that come out not dark are the people that are not dark at all. Which are who? The Edomites. All right. Those are the bastards that dwell in Ashdod, man. You know? So Israelites are the sons. Those are the true sons, man. All right. It says the, the sun hath looked upon me. So when you're out there and you're sunbathing, all right, getting a suntan. Let's look that up. Suntan. Sus. 
suntan look at that white people just getting fucking burnt all right and you have some white people that are actually so-called white people all right that are actually israelites man you know look at this why don't they want to show dark-skinned people because you can't really tell man you just get darker you know But they have white people because it's so noticeable. You see? <laughs> God damn, man. You know? But that ain't the only thing to tell who an Israelite is. But I'm just showing you how the ancient Israelites were. Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun had looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. All right? So the sun has looked upon him, man. You know, being dark skinned. And this is Solomon, man. That was Solomon speaking. You know? So let me go to uh Bastard shall dwell in Ish Ashdod. What's another one? John 4 and 20. It says, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, saying ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Alright, this woman was from uh Samaria. All right. Then Yahweh Shai said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Why? Because we were kicked out of Israel. It's always happened, man. Kicked out of Israel over and over and over and over. From the beginning, we were kicked out of that land. It says, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. All right. Starting from the house of Judah on down to um the 12 tribes all right so in the in israel we were kicked out man you know so those men that dwell in ashdod right now all right ashdod people these are jewish they don't call themselves jews these are israeli they don't call themselves israelites all right see These are bastards, man. Why? Because they were rejected by the Most High. All right? You're either a bastard because your father passed away, you know, or you're a bastard because your father rejected you and left you. You know? So let me get to that. Um, Hebrews 12. Let me continue on in verse 8. Uh, no, verse 9. Furthermore, we have had our fathers of the flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence shall not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live why because the most high is the father of every single nation all right he is the father of all the spirits he created everything you know when you're the creator you're the father you see but he's only that father figure right now to israel eventually all nations will be subject unto the most high unto yahweh and unto israel you see, but he's that father figure to Israel. He has not dealt so with any other nation, with any other families of the earth, man. Only with the with the Israelites, you know, it says uh, verse 10, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our prophet, you see, father figure that we might be partakers of his holiness now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby, which are the elect, you know, and all Israel too. You know, like uh, Second uh, Maccabees chapter 6, verse 12, you know, everything that is written in this book is for our learning, for our chastening. For the bettering of our nation, man. Verse 12. Wherefore, lift up your hands which hang down in the feeble knees and make straight the paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it be rather, uh, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest many fail of the grace of the Most High, lest any root of bitterness bring up trouble you and thereby be def uh, defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person 
as Esau, who for one more sale of meat sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. That's the bastard, because he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. You see? And Esau means wasted away is he. You know? Wasted away. His skin was wasted. That's wasted skin right there, man. No melanin, no protection. That's a waste. All right? When you buy wax for your car, what does the wax do? It keeps it shiny. All right? It keeps it nice. But most importantly, all right, is to protect the damn paint. You know? If you don't have any, any covering on your paint, all right, which is the... Uh, I forgot what it's called, that clear sealant uh, paint, which is a clear coat on top of your paint, which is a protectant. If you don't have that clear sealant, what happens to your paint? It wastes away. You know, as soon as the sun hits, it's going to start taking off all the all the paint. And these people, they get skin cancer in the sun, man. They can't look at the sun. Yeah, how was I walk the desert for 40 days and 40 nights? He would have been sunburned as hell if he was a white man. He would have had cancer by the end of that trip, man. You know? It's common sense, man. You know? But Esau found no... Let's put wasted skin, as I had mentioned. Let's see what comes up. Wasted skin. Mm. Yeah, nothing comes up. That's all right. We'll just cancel that. All right, but um, I think that's it on that. No, you know what? Let me let me, now. Let me get Revelations four, which is what I was gonna get last earlier. All right, Revelations four and two says, and immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, the throne was set in heaven, and one set on the throne all right so in heaven one set on the throne who is that has to be the most high right it says and he sat, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone and there was a rainbow around about the, the throne in the sight like unto an emerald all right so his throne was colorful and beautiful and he looked like a jasper and a sardine stone so the jasper and sardine stone have to match up so let's look at it you have a sardine stone, a jasper stone first, because right, the sardine stone clarifies. Jasper, a precious stone of various colors. For some are purple, others blue, green, and other colors of brass. First, let's look up brass. A yellow alloy of copper and zinc. All right. Yellow brass is actually, you know, short, short term for brown. All right. It says um, jasper, a gem. It doesn't tell you how it uses it in this sentence. Uh, I got a stone crystal. All right. It won't tell you. All right. That's all right. Because in the other one, it will tell you. Because you have sardine stone. All right. So he's looking upon the face of this man. And he sees a jasper and a sardine stone. Which is sardinos. A sardius. A precious stone of which... There are two types. The former, all right, is called carnelian because of the flesh color. And the latter is sard, all right, carnelian. If you know what the word carne means, all right, carnelian goes back to flesh, all right? Carne means flesh, you know, carnelian stone. Look at this. That's a brown skin tone, man. Brown, all right? Raw carnelian stone. See that? It's dark. There ain't no white. It's a dark skin. That's what he was seeing. See? He was looking at a dark skin. He wasn't looking at no Edomite. You know? 
So the sardius stone that that he was uh, uh, Apostle John was looking at. All right. Which they called John the Revelator. He was looking at the most high and he looked like a dark skinned man. You know. A dark skinned man with woolly hair. Who else has woolly hair, man? You know, and I'm just going to type it in because it'll come up. Uh, woolly. Woolly hair. All right. Here you have woolly hair. See that? Which I don't even know. Uh, KJV. He had hair like wool. All right. Feet like burnt brass. This is burnt brass right here. Revelations 1 and 15. Revelations 1 and 14. All right. So it's talking about dark skinned people, man. I mean, it's point blank period, you know. But now you have a mixture of our people. All right. You have our people that are actually really light skin you know but they're still israelites uh oops blake uh what's his name let's put clippers blake griffin there we go blake griffin see this man that looks like a white boy man you know but his father is a dark-skinned man This is his son. Look how his son came out, man. He looks whiter than him. You know? Look at the hair texture. You see? So we don't judge according to the outward man, but according to the spirit. You know? Uh, spirit. I forgot what, which one that one was. Hmm... Let me see. I'm going to try and find it over here. Judge. Oops. According to the spirit. Uh, what was the first Corinthians? Where is he? Uh, what is spiritual things? Oh, there it is. John 7, 24. So lucky. John 7 and 24. Judge not according to the appearance. All right, we don't judge. Oh, because look, look he, he's dressing like a Jake. That means he's a Jake. No. All right. But judge righteous judgment, which is what? According to the spirit. All right. According to the works. If you say you're a Hebrew Israelite, all right, and you're fighting sincerely for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, then you are a Hebrew Israelite, even if you look like, you know, an Edomite, even if you look like an Ammonite or a, a or a, 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 a Moabite, you know, it's according to the spirit, man, you know. But I just wanted to go into the dark origin of the Israelites, you see, because they were dark skin, you know. Yahweh Shai was a dark skinned man. The Most High is a dark skinned man. You know, but that's it on that. I hope that was edifying. So with that, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, and double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth, true well. Shalom and stay strong out there, Akim.